Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to look at those LED pixels again, uh, these things here, and if you haven't seen the previous video then put a link to that in the description section below. So uh, obviously last time we just sort of saw what they were, but uh, this time we'll actually see what can be done with these things and actually make them into something useful. Now I've shown these in the previous video, and say so basically it's just a uh, three colour or RGB LED in there a little chip there and then it's obviously all connected and supplied in this pre-wired format and uh, the idea is that these uh, will fit into a circular hole in a panel and these particular ones uh, require a 12 millimeter hole and they've actually got little uh, tabs on the side let's have a closer look there and you can see that uh, on the side here there's obviously a uh, sort of recess so when you press it into the panel it will sort of just sort of snap in place and obviously hold in the appropriately sized hole now, so these require a 12 millimeter hole. Um, some others do require different size holes, so nine millimeters and so on. So if you do buy these, uh, don't just assume, do actually uh, check what size they are. Otherwise you could end up with a horrible mess. Now the material we're going to be using for the panel in this case is uh, this, which is uh, Fomex. So it's a basically uh, PVC with a uh, aerated core. So it's got a fairly smooth surface on both sides. And then the uh, inside is sort of uh, foamed or aerated so it's quite a soft material fairly easy to cut and fairly easy to drill as well and it's also lightweight and so on uh, obviously you could use other materials I mean you could use acrylic if you wanted to although that's considerably harder and uh, more likely to uh, shatter and break and obviously you could use a metal sheet or whatever but uh, in any case uh, that's what we're going to be using this time and uh, for drilling uh, there's no particular secrets to drilling plastic I usually use these types of uh, spade bits obviously intended for timber and it's mainly because you've got the uh, sharp point there which means you can easily get it in the uh, accurate position in the center of the hole you want and then you've got the two uh, lips there which obviously cut the outer perimeter of the hole and of course this is a uh, 12 millimeter size there obviously to go with the uh, 12 millimeter leds that we have now in terms of actually uh, drilling the hole what you need of course is some kind of template so uh, didn't make that out of a paper and just do this on the computer and uh, I just chill this out by hand and then just put a, a little dot. What these actually are is a, a 12 millimeter circle and then it has a little dot in the middle and then when printing you just print the little uh, dot in the middle there so you can uh, lay out the uh, 12 millimeter pieces make sure they're not going to overlap or uh, too close together and uh, then just print it out and then you get the little dot where the center of each hole is. As you can see you can get the uh, spike of the uh, drill bit right on the hole and then of course when you uh, drill down there with the uh, power drill it will uh, make sure the hole is in the exact position that you need. And uh, the other thing about drilling plastic is to use a slow speed on the drill because if you go too fast it will heat up and it will actually melt the plastic and make a horrible mess and you won't get a nice clean hole so a fairly slow speed and uh, obviously you need to put a uh, old scrap timber or something underneath when you're drilling through. Now I'm not going to show you drilling hundreds of holes in plastic because that would be somewhat tedious so uh, here's one I prepared earlier and uh, as you can see I've uh, just cut it into a strip there and obviously drilled out the various holes in the uh, desired lettering shape. Now this actually has a protective film on it which is why it's got this little label here which says please remove film so it's just sort of peeling up at the edge there just to uh, avoid it being scratched and destroyed. Now this is actually a bit too long so I'll be uh, just trimming off the uh, ends on this one later. Now, as in the previous video, I'm actually going to be using this uh, pre-made little uh, controller unit, uh, mainly because it's uh, cheap and uh, easy and you don't have to uh, faff about with uh, programming or whatever. And that also comes with this nice remote control, so you can pick various colours and different patterns and so on. And these are actually only about £5 for the uh, controller and the uh, remote as well. And you can drive these from uh, a microcontroller or whatever else you want, but uh, of course that's uh, quite a lot more effort involved there. So um, all that remains of course is to put these uh, into the uh, pre-cut piece of plastic here and I want to find the right end so I've got the end here with the uh, holes in and obviously there's the pin so uh, we can basically call that the start of it. Uh, the other end of this does have another plug that's obviously got the pin in as well so you could continue on to another section. So all that remains then is to uh, basically plug these in to the uh, piece of board here. Obviously uh, you do that from the back and uh, in this case uh, so you're going to start at the uh, basically the uh, first letter here, the D, and let us work along. So these just press in from behind. They do need a bit of a uh, wiggle to get in there, and as you see, they will just push through the front. 
and then pretty much hold in place like that. And uh, then of course just we'll uh, do the next one and just basically carry on along the whole length of the uh, plastic board there until we get to the end. Now I've done that line there and what I'm actually going to do is to put uh, this one in at the bottom and then the next one I'm actually going to put in at the top of the uh, letter D there and then we'll go to the one next to and again then we'll just go down to this one here at the bottom and next to that one And the reason for this is I want the colours in the uh, cycle to start at this end and then basically work across. So we don't want to sort of be going round and round the letters. It wants to sort of just go across in a pattern. But obviously you can put them in, in any way you'd like. So I'll just speed up and I'll just do the rest of these. And then we'll uh, come back in a minute when I've finished these. So I've just put all those through the holes. And uh, as you can see on the back it looks uh, a bit of a mess. But uh, of course there's no real uh, effort here involved because it's all uh, supplied pre-wired. So... Uh, it's a question of plugging them in the various holes. And uh, this, of course, is the end which will uh, connect to the controller. And uh, this particular one only used 49 of the individual items, and there's actually 50 per length. So I've got a spare one here which I'll uh, just cut off and then uh, just cover over the three leads at the end there. Now, a quick demonstration of how these things are going to work. Uh, I've got this little controller box here, and it has this lead for the uh, infrared uh, pickup sensor. And that just has that uh, lead with the uh, plug on. Just goes into the string of LEDs there, and it comes with this little remote control. And these two things together are only five pounds. So although you could get a microcontroller and uh, program it up and put the appropriate circuits and whatever in, this is clearly uh, much faster and easier in this particular case. So uh, power just goes in the box here, and then we can turn on. Now that's the uh, sort of curtain. Uh, effect and it can also go in the other direction it's obviously from the middle outwards and we've also got uh, this sort of rather strange shimmering effect from one side to the other and again that goes in the other direction also this sort of uh, flashing dot arrangement okay, in the two directions those look uh, hugely different either way <coughs> and then the uh, one end to the other and of course uh, in reverse also. And then you've got this weird thing which is supposed to leave a sort of a uh, fading trail behind each one as it goes along or goes in the other direction. And of course you can adjust the speed of this as well so it can be uh, turned up to a much higher speed. And there's the uh, curtain-y type thing on the uh, higher speed there. And then of course it's flashing and some sort of weird uh, random colours there and you can also have it flashing in uh, various different shades and if you use the uh, individual colour buttons you can either have it on solid to whatever colour you would like and multiple colours and more multiple colours and again if you use the uh, flashing bit it actually goes through all of those just to turn that speed down a lot that's sort of flashing with a off period in the middle and then that's without the off period it just goes between all of the colors and this one is the one uh, probably only going to be using which uh, basically sort of cycles through in a sort of gradient type arrangement now the other function here which i did show in the other video is this button here which is ic set and you press that they will come on in that sort of dull uh, red color and then it's the up and down buttons and that basically sets how many actual pixels you've got. Now obviously this is set up because they're all illuminated but if I uh, turn that down you'll see that uh, some of them are going out and then that basically indicates that it's only going to send the commands out up to this particular point. So uh, depending on how many you've got you need to just set that so that you get to the end and then don't go any further because otherwise it's going to be sending commands to pixels that don't exist. Well, it won't break anything but obviously uh, the pattern won't uh, obviously work when it's the uh, curtain thing and whatever and then once you've done that it's just simply then press the other button to pick whatever color you want and you've got sort of white and warm white and uh, various colors and whatever as well so 
these ones uh, do go through the colours, but it basically just does the pattern once and then uh, moves on to the next colour. And again, the same sort of thing with that, it just changes the whole thing to the next colour. Now, I've actually made a few others here as well, and uh, as you can see on this one, uh, I've actually got uh, a number of holes spare here. So, in theory, you can just get another left set of these and uh, just plug in here and extend and carry on. But uh, I'm actually going to just cut these wires and then solder on the uh, remaining few that we need here because, uh, first of all, if we use the connector here, then we won't have the connector for another one over there. And also, of course, soldering those together is uh, far more reliable than this, uh, what is actually quite a flimsy little connector here. And uh, in terms of uh, joining them together, of course, the main thing to ensure is you've got the uh, correct polarity. Obviously, uh, it's positive and negative on the outsides and the data in the centre, so uh, you want to make sure that the uh, positive and negative are correctly connected. See on this one, there's quite a bit of uh, breakout on the uh, back of the panel there. That's where the drill has uh, gone through, but again, that's not really a uh, problem because, of course, uh, you're not going to be seeing the back. It's going to be uh, completely hidden from view when it's put inside some kind of case. So we've just connected those there, and it's just a question of putting them into the uh, holes that we have left. And then, of course, the many ones again were just cut off. And just to put a uh, bit of tape on the end of that. Now, that's before we just check that the uh, thing does actually work. So let's plug in the controller. And of course, the power supply. And of course, as before, we've only got uh, a certain number illuminated, so uh, we just need to use that set thing on there again to uh, fill in the uh, remaining pixels there. And we can go through the various colours, and of course the uh, colour cycling thing as before. Now this one still has the uh, protective covering on, so we'll uh, remove that as well. That's why that's that white label in there. It uh, basically says remove film before or prior to installation. So uh, just throw that away. Now the final part with these is to uh, fix them in a bit more permanently and also uh, cover up these uh, taped connections here. Now these uh, obviously press fit into the panel and they would probably stay there but uh, also due to the uh, manufacturing tolerances on these some of them are possibly a bit looser than they should be and again some of them uh, are quite tight so uh, bearing in mind where this is going uh, it's useful to actually fix them in a bit more permanently and the easy way to do that is just to use the uh, hot glue there so uh, we'll just put some glue around all of the uh, bits on the back and I'll also uh, cover these with the hot glue as well so of course that thing going to be permanently sealed in. And again, this is only 5 volts, so uh, obviously you wouldn't use this method for uh, mains connections, but I say this is a 5 volt uh, isolated supply, so not an issue. So uh, just a question of uh, going all around the back and uh, securing them in. And of course, before doing this, make sure that they all are actually level on the front panel. You haven't got any sticking out a mile or any that are poked in too far. Use the uh, large sticks because it's uh, rather more convenient than the uh, piddly little small ones you can buy. So there we go, so I'll just leave that to uh, cool over there, and of course, do uh, likewise with the others. So there we go, all uh, glued together, so all these are now uh, all solidly uh, attached, uh, no danger of any shorts there. and. Uh, all of the individual pixels are now uh, fully glued in to the back of the plastic. And of course, uh, we'll show through on the front as you would expect. Now I've actually got controllers for all three of these, so they'll have their individual controller. And then the uh, actual piece here will be put into a frame, obviously with some kind of uh, edging material. And then it'll just be another sheet of the black uh, Fomex board on the back. And the little controller 
will just sit inside. Not be that end, but uh, just sit inside there like that. And then the other piece of uh, board will be on the back. I'll cut that lug off and then just leave a little hole in there to uh, allow the power lead to be plugged in. And then the infrared sensor. I yeah, just need a little hole uh, somewhere to poke that through. I don't think this uh, plastic is uh, transmitted to infrared, but uh, again, basically, once these are set up with a particular pattern, then they'll probably left on that pattern for a fairly long time anyway. So uh, there we go. That's uh, LED pixels and uh, something you can do with them. And obviously, there's many other things you can do, but uh, obviously, that's entirely down to your personal choice. So uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching.